Peace and blessings, Israel, the Most High, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bless us all. We are in the book of Acts. The Acts of the Apostles of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So we're going to read from Acts chapter 10. And verse 38. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. So this is Peter, the apostle Peter speaking unto Cornelius, his kinsmen, and his friends that were all gathered together to hear the gospel of Christ be preached unto them by Peter. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit with power. So Peter is declaring unto Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends, they were all gathered to hear the gospel of Christ preached unto them. And Peter's bringing out how the Most High anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to be endued with power from on high after he was baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, who went about doing good. So through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth went about doing righteousness and healing all the people and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So the Lord Christ was healing all of the people of Israel that were oppressed of the devil. So the different sicknesses and ailments and infirmities that troubled them, the Lord delivered them from the bondage of these sicknesses. The Lord was setting Israel free from these sicknesses by the power and authority of the Most High. They were oppressed of the devil. They were, ca they were taken captive by Satan at his will. And they were in, uh, under the bond of these sicknesses. And Jesus Christ, by the power and authority of the Most High, healed the people that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with them, see? So the Most High was with Jesus Christ. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. See? So Peter and the apostles, Peter... His brother Andrew, his brother in Christ, John and his brother James and, and the rest of the disciples, they were all witnesses of all the works and healings and teachings that Jesus Christ did by the power and authority of the Most High, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. So all throughout the land of Israel, Judea, Jerusalem, they were witnesses of the works that Christ did by the power and authority of the Most High in the land, whom they, meaning the chief priests, the chief priests, elders, scribes, the Pharisees, along with Pilate and Herod, slew and hanged on a tree. So Jesus Christ was crucified and killed and nailed onto a cross that was made from a tree during the preparation of the Passover. So when Christ was crucified and killed and slew and, and slew on and hanged on that tree, he became our Passover. He made an atonement for our sins. Him, meaning Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God raised up the third day. So Peter's bringing out to Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends how the Most High raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. Three days and three nights after his burial. And showed him openly. So the Most High showed Christ being risen from the dead openly to the people. 
when the Lord appeared, beginning with his disciples after his resurrection from the dead. He appeared unto them. Not to all the people. See? So he didn't appear to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God. See? So these witnesses that were chosen before of God were the disciples. Peter, Andrew, John, James, and the rest of the brothers, the disciples, chosen before of God. And the reason why God raised up Christ from the dead three days and three nights after his burial, the reason why he was risen from the dead is because it was not possible that Jesus Christ should be holding of death. Neither his body suffered corruption in the grave. Because he that knew no sin became sin for us, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. So Christ, upon that cross that he was nailed to, suffered and bared our sins and our iniquities on that cross. To make an atonement for our sins. So that we could be forgiven from our sins through the sacrifice of himself. That's why John the Baptist called him the Lamb of God, which was to take away our sins. So let's continue to read in verse 41. Acts 10, 41. Even to us. Even to us. So who is the us? Peter, Andrew, John, James, and Philip, and, and Thomas, and the rest of the disciples. Who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. So after, after Christ was risen from the dead. He appeared unto his disciples. After his resurrection. And he did eat and drink with them. After he rose from the dead. Verse 42. And he meaning Jesus Christ. Commanded us. Meaning he commanded the disciples. To preach. Unto the people. So the Lord Christ commanded Peter and the apostles to preach out of the law of Moses and the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David that he is the Messiah, the Christ, the Lord of Israel, the Redeemer, the Savior of Israel. That was commanded of Christ to be preached by the disciples unto the people, meaning the people of the children of Israel. Beginning at Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. And to testify, so they were to testify that it is he, that's Jesus Christ, which was ordained of God. See, Jesus Christ was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. So Jesus Christ was ordained of God to judge those that are alive at his second coming and those are the dead because the dead are going to be raised from the dead to be judged by Jesus Christ when he sitteth upon the seat of judgment so this is going to take place at his second appearing the last day judgment day to him, meaning to Jesus Christ, give all the prophets witnesses. So all the prophets, for example, Moses, Ezra, Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Micah, Amos. These are just a few of the many prophets that spoke of Christ. That's why I say to him, meaning to Jesus Christ, give all the prophets, all the prophets, witnesses, that through his name, see, through the one that they preached, the Messiah, the Redeemer of Israel, the Savior of Israel. What does our Lord's name mean? What is the meaning of his name? Savior. Through his name, by the power and authority. That was given unto Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whosoever. Whosoever among the people of Israel. Believeth in him. Believeth that Jesus. 
of Nazareth is the Christ, the Lord of Israel, the Messiah of Israel, the Redeemer of Israel, shall receive remission of sins. See? So we receive remission of our sins through Christ. The atonement that he made for us on that cross when he spilled his blood. Verse 44. So let's read Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words. So Peter is preaching Christ unto Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends. He's preaching unto them how the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth was endued with power from on high through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And now he healed all those that were oppressed of the devil. And now he was crucified. And hanged on a tree. He was nailed to a cross that was made from a tree. And how the Most High raised him from the dead the third day and showed him openly. Peter is preaching unto them. How the Lord commanded them to preach that he is the judge of the quick and dead. So while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit fell on all of them which heard the word. So Peter is preaching Christ unto Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends. So while they're hearing the word, what happens? While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all them which heard the word. So Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends are hearing the word being preached unto them and the Holy Spirit descends or falls upon them. While Peter is yet preaching Christ unto them. Verse 45. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. So you had the circumcision of Israel. So these were Israelites that were raised in the law of Moses, circumcised the eighth day. That were believers of Jesus Christ. They were astonished or taken back. As many as came with Peter, because there was a, a company of men that, that came with Peter. To hear Peter preach Christ unto Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends. So why were they astonished? Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. So the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was poured out upon. The gift of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was poured out upon. The living water was being poured out upon Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends. And it referred to them as Gentiles or the uncircumcision of Israel. See, it was the circumcision that were astonished that the uncircumcision of Israel or the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the uncircumcision of Israel were Israelites that were formerly of the way of life, living their life in the customs and manners of the other nations. For they, meaning the circumcision of Israel, Peter and the men that were with, were all together, for they heard them speak with tongues. So Peter and the rest of the men that were with him heard Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends speak with tongues, meaning speak the word of God in other languages. Just like Peter and the apostles during the Feast of First Fruits, they spoke in tongues. That speaking in tongues means speaking the word of God in different languages. 
and magnify God. So Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends, they were all together magnifying the Most High that Christ was preached unto them. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water? Can any man forbid water? That these, these men, Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends, the uncircumcision of Israel, should not be baptized. So Peter's asking the question, what stops these men from being baptized in water? So Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends, through Peter, the word is being preached unto them. And they receive the outpour of the Holy Spirit by the hearing of the word. So the question is, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? Which have received the Holy Spirit as well as we. So the question is, the question that Peter is posing is, what stops these men from being baptized in water after already receiving the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? And he commanded them to be baptized, meaning in water, after they already received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He commanded them to be baptized. Now this baptism that they're commanded is water baptism. How do we know that? Because it said the word water right there in verse 47. So he's not commanding them to be baptized with the word. Because they already what? Heard the word. See, that's why we have to read that verse again. While Peter yet spake these words. What words? The words of Christ. The words of the Most High in Christ. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit fell on all them. Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends, the uncircumcision of Israel, which heard the word. So they already heard the word. So let's understand what's happening here, Israel. Because what these scriptures here is exposing is the devil doctrine of many of these so-called camps in Israel that teach falsely that you don't have to be baptized in water. Once you believe in Jesus Christ, Once you believe in Jesus Christ, you're already baptized. You don't have to be baptized in water. Well, Peter himself said we ought to obey God rather than men. So why is Peter commanding Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends to be baptized in water after they already believed in Jesus Christ out of the word, out of the scriptures? Why is he commanding Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends to be baptized in water after they already received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Because many false teachers in Israel will teach you, you don't have to be baptized in water. All you got to do is believe in Jesus Christ and you're already baptized. You got to keep the law, statutes, commandments. Wait a minute. What is Peter saying? A true shepherd of Israel. A true leader in Israel. One who faithfully obeyed the commandments of Christ. Can any man forbid water? That these should not be baptized in water? Which have received the Holy Spirit as well as we. These men have received the outpour of the Holy Spirit as well as we have. So what forbids these men to be baptized in water? Verse 48, and he, meaning Peter, out of his own accord, commanded them to be baptized. To be baptized in what? It's crystal clear, Israel, as clear as water. 
water. He commanded them to be baptized in water in the name of the Lord that was being preached unto them, who was Jesus Christ. So Peter commanded Cornelius and his kinsmen, his kinsmen and his friends to be baptized in water. In the name of the Lord, meaning under the power and authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is being preached unto them. Let's read verse 33. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done. That thou art come. So these are the words that Cornelius was speaking unto Peter. The apostle Peter. Immediately therefore I said to thee. And thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore. Are we all here. This was Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends. Present before God. So we are all here present before God. To hear all things that are what? Commanded thee of God. So, going back to verse 48. When the scripture said, And he, meaning Peter, commanded them, meaning Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends, to be baptized in water after they already received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the living water. He commanded them to be baptized in water because that was a commandment of God. So everything that Peter spoke, that was a commandment of God through Christ. So everything that Peter was preaching, that was commanded of God. That's why Peter had that vision. To preach unto Cornelius. See, those unclean foods that Peter saw in the vision when the Moshe said, rise, kill, and eat. That was symbolic of the uncircumcision of Israel. That were cleansed through the blood of Christ. Let's read verse 24. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and his near friends. Verse 27. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. So Peter comes in to talk with Cornelius, and he found many, many of the uncircumcision of Israel. That will come together. And who were they? It told us. And Cornelius waited for them. Meaning Cornelius waited for Peter. And the men that accompanied with, uh, Peter. And had called together his kinsmen. Meaning his fellow Israelite brothers. And near what? And near friends. So it was his kinsmen and his friends. Brothers and sisters that were gathered together. And like we read in verse 33, to what? To hear all things that are commanded thee of God. So Peter preached Christ unto Cornelius, his kinsmen and his friends. They believed in Christ. They believed in Christ. By hearing the word being spoken unto them. By Peter. They received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And even though they received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Even though they already believed in Jesus Christ. Peter commanded. That these men. Were to be baptized in water. Baptized in water. Why? We just read in verse 33. To hear all things that are commanded thee 
of God. So that was not Peter of his own accord. Commanding Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends to be baptized in water. After they already believed in Christ and I had already received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Matthew 28 and 18. And we'll end it here in these three verses. Matthew chapter 28, 18. Let's further read why. Peter commanded Cornelius and his kinsmen, his kinsmen and his friends to be baptized in water. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them. So this is when Jesus Christ appeared unto his disciples after his resurrection from the dead. Just like Peter was teaching Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends, like we read in Acts 10. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me. See, all power and authority was given unto Jesus Christ of the Most High in heaven and in earth. So through Jesus Christ ascending to sit on the right hand of God in heaven, all power and authority would be given unto him to rule in heaven and in earth because this the gospel of Christ was going to be continued to be preached here on earth that's why in verse 19 let's read it it says that's this is Matthew 28 19 go ye therefore see remember when Peter said that unto Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends how he commanded us to preach unto the people. I just want to get that point again. Right here. And he, meaning Jesus Christ, after his resurrection from the dead, when he appeared unto his disciples, before he ascended into heaven, commanded us, meaning he commanded the apostles, to preach unto the people, meaning they were to preach unto the people of Israel, out of the law of Moses and the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David, that he is the Christ, the Messiah, the Redeemer of Israel. He commanded us to preach unto the people. So that's what we're reading here in Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore, meaning because Jesus Christ was given all power and authority of the Most High to rule in heaven and in earth, Go ye therefore and teach, meaning teach out of the law of Moses and the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David that Jesus Christ is the Messiah of Israel. They were to preach the sufferings, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ and his ascension into heaven and everything else that was written of Christ in the law of Moses and the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David. Because Christ, when you read in Luke 24, verses 44 and 45, he taught them out of the law of Moses and the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David. The prophecies concerning him, specifically pertaining to his sufferings and his death and burial. And teach all nations. So the reason why I said teach all nations, because the circumcision and uncircumcision of Israel is scattered among all nations. So remember, it said, go ye therefore. That's a commandment. And teach all nations. So teach out of the scriptures. They were to teach out of the scriptures that Jesus of Nazareth is the Lord and the Messiah of Israel. The, 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 that he is the one that is ordained of God to, to judge those that are alive and those that are dead at his coming in the resurrection from the dead. So it says, and teach all nations. So that covers the teaching of the scriptures. That, that right there, and teach all nations, meaning that covers the teaching of the scriptures. Now let's read the next part. Baptizing them. So for the ones of Israel that believed in Jesus Christ, that he was the Lord and Messiah of Israel, out of the scriptures, the apostles are being commanded to baptize them. Baptize them in what? Water. 
It's not talking about baptizing with the word because this part already covers the teaching of the word and teach all nations. Teach out of the scriptures. Israel among all nations that he is the Messiah of Israel. Now, once the ones of Israel that believe upon him according to the scriptures, the Lord Jesus Christ is commanding his disciples to baptize them. Baptize them in what? Water. Not with the word. Because there is no man on this earth that could baptize you with the word. Ephesians 5.26 tells us that Jesus Christ is the one. That sanctifies us and purifies and cleanses us with the washing of water by the word. Ain't no man on this earth that could baptize you with the Holy Spirit in the word. That's only Christ. John the Baptist said that. That he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And with fire. So the fire is unquenchable fire. Ain't no man could baptize you with unquenchable fire, everlasting shame and contempt. That's only Christ. Therefore, the only one that could baptize us with the Holy Spirit is Christ, the Word. Let's understand and be clear on one thing, Israel. That the only baptism that man can perform on this earth is water baptism. Ain't no man could baptize you with the Holy Spirit, the Word, unquenchable fire. So they're being commanded of Christ to baptize Israel that believed upon him out of the scriptures in water. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. So by the power and authority and influence of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. They were to go and teach Israel among all nations that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Messiah of Israel. And under that very same power, authority, and influence, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, they were to baptize Israel in water. Verse 20. Teaching them. So Peter and the apostles were to teach Israel that believed upon Christ and that were baptized in water in the name of Christ to observe, meaning to keep in guard, all things whatsoever what I have commanded you now what did he just command them to preach repentance and to baptize Israel in water this is why Peter commanded that Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends be baptized in water after they already believed in Jesus Christ out of the scriptures and after that they already received the outcome of the Holy Spirit Peter was not going to play games with the commandment of Christ. Because Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And if you keep my commandments, I'm going to give you another comforter. And he shall be with you always. And the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth was with Peter and the apostles. Why? Because they were faithful and obedient to the commandments of Christ. So everything that Christ commanded them to preach, they preached. Even when he commanded them to, to baptize Israel in water, they baptized Israel in water. And lo, I am with you always. See, the Lord will always be with those that keep the commandments of Christ. Beginning with his disciples. Even unto the end of the world, amen. So has the end of the world came yet? No. So till then, we're under orders to repent, preach repentance, and to be baptized in water in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because it's the, it's the Most High Christ and the Holy Spirit, three separate entities that work together as one. That has the word being preached. How do you think the, the, the apostles did all the works that Christ did and greater works than what Christ did? It was through Christ ascending to the Father to sit on the right hand of God. And the presence of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit was with Peter and the apostles all throughout the book of Acts. So all praises to the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because what these scriptures are showing us that repentance 
believing in Christ, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and water baptism, they all go hand in hand. So peace and blessings to Israel. Most high in Christ, bless us all.